Welcome to Two as One. I'm Charles Opio. This is Susan. We are journeying in the process of marriage, unpacking the principles, the patterns, because this is one of the things closest to God's heart. We've looked at how the two greatest relationships and the two most powerful relationships in the earth is the relationship between God and man and the relationship between man and woman. And as we are looking at these issues, we have been opening up the principle of what love means, what love means to the world, what love means to the kingdom, and the difference. We've also been saying that, you know what? Love is not enough to build a marriage, but we defined what love is not enough because there's the love called agape. With it, marriage is perfect because that's the love God always instituted for man. But as we look at this, obviously then we come into the environment of the marriage and the question that needs to arise, now that we've touched on love, now that we've expressed it, we need to look at a scripture and begin to unpack, to unpack what that scripture means. Because this scripture has caused a lot of controversy in the interpretation that various people have interpreted it. Susan. This is uh, Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, love your wives as just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. And uh, I'd like that to do also with the wives part. The wife is verse 22 of the same, Ephesians chapter 5, and that is wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, so also Christ is the head of the church and is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let wives be to their own husband in everything. Now this is interesting. If you read the scriptures on face value, you'll end up with a, an argument on both sides. One side will tell you, scripture says, husbands, love, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And you know, we are really good at extrapolating that. You know, how he loved the church, he gave up himself for her. It's true. It's true. It also says, wives, Submit to your husbands as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in this one it says that, um, and wives, submit to your own husbands in everything. Isn't that a difficult statement? Asking someone to submit to somebody else in everything. Mm -hmm. But you see, it depends on where you're reading it from. If you're going to pick a cultural marriage Oy. and apply these scriptures, you'll have misapplied them completely. Mm -hmm. If you're going to speak Pick any marriage, two people decided to get married, you've been running your marriage on the other three dimensions of love, filio, storge, or eros, and then you're trying to apply this scripture. It will not apply. If you're looking at marriage based on what everybody else thinks marriage is, it will make a difference. Mm. But if you position the marriage within the kingdom, in fact, everything will begin to make sense. Let me explain. In fact, I want to start from the context of men. See, for men, who is God referring to here? Mm. This is a very interesting word. He didn't say men. He said husbands. Mm. The question one must ask is, who is a husband? Mm. Mm -hmm. Because this is where we go wrong. A husband in scripture is not somebody who is married. Mm. A husband in scripture is not somebody who is just... Um, uh, from a cultural perspective, now has a family. Yes. And then suddenly, because he's your husband and because you are married, now you must submit to him. Mm -hmm. The word husband is a very interesting word. It comes from some connotations in scripture. In fact, the Bible calls Jesus the husbandman. Yes. In original meaning, the gardener. Which garden? Eden. One who God has given an environment, an assignment. Yes. One who is connected to God. That person is being told, let me show you how to manage. Mm. Because you're connected to God, yes. this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. You have given you a wife. I've given you the highest relationship in the earth. Yep. That relationship can only be managed through agape. Love, yes. You must love that relationship. And why is it coming as a command in Ephesians, because it is being directed to somebody who has left an environment that is not necessarily the kingdom. Mm, mm -hmm. Somebody who's come from a place where this instruction is contrary. Where you've come from, 
she's supposed to love you. Yeah. Where you've come from, she's supposed to do certain things. But your instruction is absolutely strange. Mm. You're being told that you must love her as Christ loved the church. But you're also being told that she will submit to you. Let me put it to you. You can only expect submission if you have agape. Submission is not for everyone. Mm. And we'll be going into why. See, this is the principle. God has called me. There's an assignment. You're supposed to connect with that assignment. Yes. You're supposed to submit to that assignment, not to me. I think there we need to <laughs> talk about that again. Because when you talk of submission, you're told submit to your own husband. Yes. yes. But this man must be submitted to Christ. Absolutely. So we cannot take a cultural marriage where a man knows no God but the gods of the clan or maybe the ancestors, and then you are telling that wife, submit to this man. No, the Bible was not talking to that man. The Bible was not talking to that woman. We have to understand there are different kinds of marriages. And if you do not identify your marriage, is it the kind of marriage where God is saying, submit to this man? Why? Because this man is already submitted to Christ. Yes. Meaning, when I look at this marriage, we are seeing the expression of heaven manifested through this marriage. Absolutely. Now, if this man is not submitted to Christ, I think we'll be talking to the wrong person. Yes. Because this is where submission becomes subjugation. Yes. This is where it becomes oppression. This yes. is where you oppress women in the name of the Bible. So when the Bible talks about husband, love your wife, not every man can. From a cultural position, you can't. Women submit to your own husband, not every woman. And while we are at it, yeah. women, when a husband is told love your wife, please don't push the agenda of filio, yes. storge, or eros. That's mm. not what the Bible is saying. Mm. The Bible is not saying to him, yes. be nice to her. Mm. Make sure she's okay. The Bible is saying, bring her into the purposes of God using those dynamics. Mm. In other words, we are not throwing them away, but they are only valuable in the context. So the greatest love that a man can show his wife is lead her to the father. That's the greatest love. That's the greatest love. Because what did we fall from? Mm -hmm. Relationship with the father. Yes. What, how did the father get us back to himself? Through love. Through love. How do we get our wives to the Father, mm -hmm. through love. Mm. What kind of love is this? Hear God, be patient, be kind, be good. All these things you be. Yes. And none of them is in response to her submission. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it is not because she has submitted, I will love her. Mm. It is not, uh -uh. it is this, if I'm a husband, I have a DNA called agape. Husbands, love your wife. You cannot do what you're not. Mm -hmm. That means the first structure of a husband is one who carries agape. It's built into your DNA. You are like your father. Yes. If God is your father and you are his son, mm. you have his character. Mm. So you have DNA, his nature. Yeah, the DNA of God. Yes. And that is love. Yes. Okay. So a man must be submitted for him to be able to download that kind of love, to yes. be able to even understand. Mm. And I think also when it says, love your wives as Christ, love the church, your measurement, your plan line is Christ. Yes. So for any man to understand how to love his wife, he must know Christ. And he will use the measurements of Christ to love his wife. So when we talk of this marriage, we are saying the first thing for any couple watching and wondering what love, because what has the world done? It has taken the same word, love, and tweaked it, and now love means buy her flowers. Really? Take her out. Buy her a gift. It's all about material things, and it ends in the natural. But when you understand that kind of love, that you lead your wife to the father, I think that is powerful. Let's, let's look at it this way. Yeah. If marriage is the exclusive, most important relationship outside of relationship with God, Yes. Buying flowers, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying don't buy flowers, man. You need to. <laughs> it's a good thing to buy. But you're buying flowers because you have agape. Mm -hmm. In other words, let's put it this way. 
I can buy flowers for any woman. Mm. What makes the flowers I buy for my wife different? You understand the difference? Mm. So you cannot tell somebody to do an external activity to achieve an internal principle. Okay. You have an internal principle that then gauges your external activity. Mm. Let me explain it this way. If I have agape, I don't have to buy her flowers. I could buy her something else. Mm. Because agape means I know her. And you know what she needs. And I know what it is that pleases her. She's my mm. friend. Mm. Agape is patient, agape is kind, agape gives no record of wrong. That's all relational. Yeah. Because of that, I can do certain things. Now, you can't make me do a thing to create agape. Yes, yeah, so love, this kind of love is not a result of me doing something. And I think also what you're saying is that the husband's first role is to be a spiritual leader. Yes. Before you can even say, I want to love my wife, hmm. you cannot love outside of your leadership. Yes. Your headship and your teacher. So that means you are her teacher, and that is maybe some of the difficult things for men to do, yes. to teach your wife, to lead her and to guide her in the spirit mm -hmm. before you can do anything in the natural. Yes. So this love is birthed in the spirit, but it cannot be birthed by one who is not a teacher, one who is a leader, one who is a priest yes. in the home. This is the issue. Yeah. How do I know? How do you know your husband loves you? Mm. How close is he to God and how close has he brought you to God? Mm. I mean... That's the correct measurement. The bar is raised. That's the new bar. Yes. The new bar is, do you see him loving his father? Yeah. Is he bringing you into the love? Mm. Does he make you admire mm. the love of the father? Mm. Do you want what he has? Mm. Do you want to enter into the revelation he has entered into? Mm. That is the first love. Because if he cannot love the one who created him, but he claims to love me. How? How? Bible says, now let's, let's take this scripture in context of marriage now. Yeah. Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Very interesting. But then it goes on to say, love your neighbor. As yourself. Now wait a minute. Which self? Mm. See, the Bible also says, he who loves his wife loves Himself. himself. So, before we can even love a third party, we must be able to love our wives mm. the way we love God. Okay. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as, as, in the same way, with mm. the same intensity, yes. with the same capacity. So, therefore, I cannot claim as a husband to love God, but I'm not loving my wife. Exactly. My love for God is seen through how I love my wife. In fact, it affects mm. how you love your wife. Mm -hmm. And w when that happens, because a woman is a womb carrier, okay. you will simply multiply it back. Mm. It's a very simple process. When she receives love, she gives back submission. Therefore, it is love multiplied. In fact, let us raise the bar. <laughs> the first thing she needs to submit to is your love. Mm. Mm. She must receive it. Yes. To receive it is to submit to it. Mm. If I submit to your love, then it is easier for me to submit to the source of your love. Yes. So submission is when I bring you into agreement with the purposes of God for our life. So we are still calling on the kingdom marriage, not every other marriage. So you're telling this man, what is your calling? What's your purpose? What are you pursuing? Who are you after, man or God? If you are after God, it means your life is so different because even when you talk of love your wife, mm -hmm. the first thing you love is love taking her back to the Father, which yes. is so different from what the world expresses as love. And how do we know that? If you read that scripture, it says, go on and read it again, especially to husbands. Yeah. I want to pull something out of that. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church mm -hmm. and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word. So how did he love her? Yeah. Read that. He that is 26, that he, he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word. So how did he love the church? Mm -hmm. By sanctifying it. Yes. To sanctify something is to set it apart for special use. Okay. To cleanse means to remove mm. everything. Yeah. That causes it not to move. Mm. To be without wrinkle mm. is to remove any aging. Mm. Remember we said everything mm. improves? Yes, 
yes, without everybody. spot yeah. is to have no history, no scar of pain. Mm. In other words, if I'm going to be loving my wife, if you've met her before, you should come and find some things missing. Mm. Mm. No spot, mm. no blemish, no wrinkle. That's what we are supposed to be doing. Yes. Why is that important? Mm. When I've done that for you, only then can you have the capacity to submit to what God has called me. Mm -hmm. How else will you operate? Yeah. How else will you be able to take me to the fullness of what God is saying? Mm -hmm. You won't be able to. Otherwise, I'm saying submit, submit to what? So there's something that God has given you. There's a calling inside of your life. There is a God factor inside of you. So when I talk of submission, that is what I'm submitting to. Yes. Now, when I say submit, when the Bible talks of submit to your husband, that means we also have to realize these husbands are holding on to something from God and they're yes. trying to, to accomplish it. Yes. That thing is what I'm submitting to. Because when you find many marriages, it's interesting how women will come and tell you, I can't submit to this man because he does this or he's not doing this. He's not um, accomplishing anything ABCD. But if we realize that, wait, our prayer should be made, my man, the kind of man I'm getting married to, or the one I already have in the house, find his way to his father yes. and submit to Christ. Yes. Because that submission, that him receiving downloads from heaven, that's what I'm submitting to. That's the thing, reason. Now, do you realize it's interesting that this kind of marriage, they are, they are not, um, let me use the word, they are not jokers in the spirit. No. We don't come home and do anything else we want to do. Then on Sunday, we say, let's pray. Or before we eat, we tell each other, hey, can we pray for the meal? Back to where we started. Yeah. Back to where we started. God creates heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. Genesis 1, he says, and he blessed them. Mm -hmm. So who is blessed? Male and female. Male and female. Mm -hmm. He blessed them to do what? Mm -hmm. To be fruitful. Yes. To multiply. To fill the earth. To have dominion. Mm -hmm. To carry out his mandate. Yes. How seriously is he taking that? Mm. How seriously is he taking that that the devil shows up to stop it? Oh, yes. And when he stops it, he now comes and tells the wife, your work is to be fruitful. And you, your work is to subdue. He separates the two. Simple. So now my work is to sit and say, and here fruitfulness also is limited to children. Exactly. And there we go subduing again. is limited to bills. And food. That's all. Yet... That was the fall. Mm. The fall says, with sweat, you will produce. Mm. So this new assignment, who gave us? The devil. Exactly. <laughs> and now, what do you want your wife to submit to? Mm. To submit to feeding you in the house. Yes. To submit to serving you on the table. Mm -hmm. To submit to, that's not, how do I wash with the water of the word and bring you into that? Okay. It doesn't connect. Mm. Something has gone wrong with the entire structure. Yeah of what God said. Mm. So husband, husband means one who is connected to the original presence of God. Of God yes. Husband is one who can access the mind of God. Mm -hmm. Husband is one who is able to bring clarity and what do I want you to submit to? There's something I'm showing you that captivates you. Mm. Something I'm showing you that connects with yes. you. Something I'm showing you that you want to be so much a part of mm. that you submit to it. Willingly. Submission is an act mm. of choice. Yes. It is not, submission cannot be demanded, mm -hmm. it can only be given. Mm. You must willingly choose to want to be part of that. Oh, yes. So that means I have to so much see where you're going, where God is calling you. Yes. So, husbands, it's true. God says, our wives should submit to us, but we are not the us. Mm. Mm, that, that the wife should submit to. We need to upgrade, we need to change. So don't focus on your wife submitting to you. Mm. Focus on being the husband because that position automatically attracts. attracts the wife who submits. Wow. To the wives, your cry should be, I want that thing that I'm submitting to. Mm. I'm praying for my husband. Remember she was a helpmate. Yes. So if God brought you, you are to help me arrive at that place I'm describing. Mm -hmm. If I'm away from that place, you can help by praying for me to get there. Mm. In the same way that the devil came by and got you to cause the man to move away, 
It's the same way you shut up the devil and you begin to pray man to get back to where he's supposed to be. Oh, yeah. And that becomes your first partnership assignment. Mm. And that assignment is submitting to the purpose. Mm -hmm. Because your desire, the kingdom come, that will be done. Yeah. Your desire is for what God wants. So, is it also true that the love, love your wife, there is something spiritual in the wife that you're loving? Yes. Not necessarily like the same way we are saying, I'm mm. not submitting to the man. No. I'm submitting to the purposes of God in the man. Yes. What about the love? Let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. The woman is a womb carrier. Okay. All right? If she's a womb carrier, it means that if I have seed, I need a womb. Yes. But the womb must be willing to carry the seed. Mm. For the womb to be willing to carry the seed, I must bring into the environment where you willingly release your womb Very to carry the seed. Yeah. So that value is so important, I must understand that without you, mm. I cannot accomplish. I think that's important to note here. Yeah. That determines how I love you. That determines how I open up the scripture for you. Mm. I need to get you connected and convinced. Without you, we will not accomplish what God has said. Mm -hmm. So what I'm bringing you to submit to is, listen, God has given us a major assignment in the earth. Yeah. This assignment is so important that without you, you can't do it. Yes. But in your present state, we can't. We can't. So let me help you. Do the word. That Become person. that person yes. who when we place this together, mm. we can bring forth what God is saying. So the word now, I mean, our lifestyle at home changes. Completely. From a place where we are playing roles to a place where we understand that God has a role that he wants both of us to play in one role. Yes. But now the devil has come and given us roles. Yes. Now the problem with these roles that we have been given is that they keep you so busy from accessing yes. God. They keep me so busy from even wanting to submit to the word. And the roles make us think life is about food, shelter, and clothing. Jesus said, after these things, to the Gentiles, not the, not sons, of God. the sons of God. The sons of God seek first. Now, let, let me topple the table a little. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the roles the devil has given us are actually useless to either. Mm -hmm. Let me explain. Yes, please. Providing food can be done by either. Yes. Useless concept. Mm. It has been proven over and over that women can provide. Okay, Men say that provide. again. It's possible for a wife to be working and providing when the man is not. The, and it's still a kingdom marriage. The fact that she's able to do it is proof she's not the, only, the man was not the one designed to do it. Okay. Okay? Mm. The basic things. Oh, a man cannot cook. He can he just won't. In fact, most men are better cooks. So it's got nothing to do with that. Yeah. So all these things we've decided to divide, mm. any can do. Okay. There are functional environments mm -hmm. that should be applied depending on the circumstance. Yeah. In other words, if we are in a journey towards what God is doing in the kingdom, mm -hmm. and God is trying to unlock, woman, maybe you're praying for your husband. Yes. That God helps him find his purpose mm -hmm. and he functions. So f because of your prayer, he loses his job. Mm. Let me explain how that works. The pressures of Because life. the job took him away from his purpose. Now he has to sit at home to hear God to get a design for the family. Mm -hmm. While he's doing that, you are working. So do you realize the rules are irrelevant? Yeah. The minute he gets clarity and you people begin to move, you may need to leave your job. In other words, other who is doing this food, shelter, clothing are irrelevant. Yes. The issue is, what is the greater purpose? Mm. Where are we going? Mm. That determines who does what now. Example, your wife is pregnant. You will serve her tea, my friend, unless you are a mad person. Because it's, mm. you will cook. In other words, is that the role of a husband? No. no. But what is happening? Because there's a child on the way. You take up that role. It means roles are circumstantial. Yeah. So the enemy has tried to make us think roles are the are permanent. End. Yes. But not knowing that these roles are supposed to help us achieve the greater calling. Simple. Yes. So any role can be taken by either. Mm. Now the problem is, what does the devil do instead? He makes you take the role and makes it your assignment and you go out there now thinking, mm. I have got a calling. I have 
I can do what men do. So the role can be done by either. Either. But the function of, le is, of leadership, yes. of headship, mm -hmm. of going where God is going yeah. doesn't change. So there's the man's function, the woman's function, but there's a role that can be done by either. Part time. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't make anybody. Remember, God said, make, give them dominion. Yes. Give them, they can both do it. Yes. But how it functions mm -hmm. is different. And we should be talking about how do we function from God's dynamic, not from the world's dynamic. Yes, I think that's so clear. That's and important. that will completely change who does what when. Mm -hmm. we, are not, we are not bound by the world. Yes. We are bound by the kingdom of God. Stay with us as we continue to look at this issue.